Today with uh, Talking Scuba, we're going to be chatting about the NDL, the No Decompression Limit. That's the time that we must end the dive and head for the surface, regardless of the amount of air you have remaining. When I first started diving on a 12 litre cylinder, diving on air, I was told pretty much that I didn't need to worry about NDL. It was nothing to do with me. And I went along with that for a while. I didn't understand why it would become important to me. And we're going to talk about how I now use it. So what is a no decompression limit? Well, basically, it's the maximum time that a diver can spend down at a specific depth without needing to make a decompression stop on the way up. It is essentially a time limit before you must start to make a controlled ascent, and that's based on the amount of nitrogen your computer reckons that you have absorbed during the dive. And if that's all you want to know, well done, you can go and have a cup of tea, but there is more, quite a lot more. Now it's very important to realise that if you exceed your NDL, you must give your body time to release the nitrogen that you have absorbed. You have effectively put a roof over your head. You cannot now go directly to the surface from where you are. You must stop to off gas on the way up. As long as we stay inside our NDL, we could, if we wanted to, go directly to the surface and skip our safety stop. We don't, but we could. As an example, a 20 metre dive on air will give you about 40 minutes NDL. But here's something to note. If you did that same dive on a nitrox mix, you'll get closer to 70 minutes NDL. That's a really big difference. So with these numbers in mind, you can see that the average recreational diver on a single cylinder breathing air or nitrox would probably not get close to their NDL. And that's simply because your air would run out before your NDL. But, and here's the big one, but if you're carrying two cylinders, the picture changes considerably because it is possible to stay down and it is possible to approach your NDL, especially if you go a little bit deeper. Now, as most of my dives are on my twin 12s, I often witness my computer counting down my remaining minutes before I reach my NDL. And as a, a trained decompression diver, um, I can do that. But just going off track slightly, uh, I don't tend to go much more than 10 minutes beyond my NDL. And that's simply because I don't like hanging around at my decompression stop for much more than 10 minutes, uh, otherwise I get bored. And the way it seems to work out for me is if I stay beyond my NDL for much more than 10 minutes, I have the same amount of penalty when I get back to my six metre stop. I've got 10 minutes there as well. So it's a balance between whether you want to spend a little bit more time on the bottom and pay the penalty of hanging around at your six metre stop. It could well be that your decompression profile asks you to stop at 12 metres for a minute, 9 metres for 2 or 3 minutes, and then a further stop at 6. But all of these decompression stops must be planned and calculated before the dive. This is certainly not something that you can plan on the fly once you realise you've gone through your NDL and then try and quickly work out a decompression profile. Uh, not possible, I don't think. Um, most unwise. It's also not just the decompression profile you have to consider. It's whether you've got enough gas to wait at your decompression stop for long enough to clear your commitment. And again, that will depend on what gas you're breathing. Saying all that, dive computers are wonderful things. If you go through your NDL by 10 or 15 minutes and make your way to the surface, your dive computer will let you know how long you have to stop at six meters to clear your commitment.
to the decompression profile. So it's not all doom and gloom, but equally planning it is the key. Now here's something you won't find in the textbooks about diving in general. I've realized that if I get close to my NDL and I make a normal ascent to the surface with my three minute safety stop, I find that I get tired in the evening. I find the dive has quite exhausted me. I don't show any signs of uh, decompression illness, no aches, pains. I'm just tired. And last year, I ended up doing a couple of safety stops with a buddy that had been down on air. I was on nitrox. And although all I had to do was my three minute safety stop, my buddy had a 12 minute decompression commitment and I stayed there with him. So my safety stop for three minutes turned into a 12 minute stop. We surfaced and that was fine. And surprise, surprise, I didn't feel tired that evening. In fact, I felt uh, quite energized. And since then, I always add a good few minutes to my safety stop or to my decompression stop just because I can and it stops me getting so fatigued after the dive. I would also mention that um, some divers carry a third bottle with them of a higher concentration of O2 so that when they do get to their decompression stop they switch to this third bottle of a high concentration of O2 to give a greater nitrogen differential and help them off gas that much quicker. Now that's referred to as accelerated uh, decompression. Uh, I haven't got that far yet, um, but I'm going to uh, give it a go. I'll finish the course off uh, in the next month or two and I'll report back on the effects. But uh, to continue the, the fatigue at the end of the dive, um, I always dive on the highest um, nitrox mix that I can uh, depending on depth, so that when I do come up to my safety stop, uh, I'm breathing a nice high O2 concentration and I stay there for a bit longer, as I've said, and try and get rid of as much nitrogen as I can. I've spoken to some of the deeper divers in the club, the guys that go down to the sort of 100 metre mark on rebreathers, and although it's a different uh, air management system, they've all reported uh, similar things. If you're going to come up with your maximum amount of nitrogen, you need to be young, fit and healthy. <laughs> At my tender age, I need a bit more margin. And to finish off talking about nitrogen, don't forget your computer is only guessing at the amount of nitrogen that you have absorbed. It doesn't know the temperature of your body. It knows the temperature of the water, but not if you're hot or cold. It doesn't know how much energy you've been expending during the dive, whether you've been really kicking hard against the current. It doesn't know if you're tired. It doesn't know if you're overweight. It doesn't know a lot of things. It does its best to calculate your nitrogen levels, but it's not a science, it's not accurate. So if you think you're not quite the fit human specimen that the, uh, the computer algorithms think you are, give yourself some space, give yourself some leeway, and don't take on board more nitrogen than you can handle. I hope you found this uh, video useful, but uh, before I go today, uh, I'd like to ask you a favor. I started doing these videos just as a way of whiling the long non-diving evenings. But if you uh, like what you see, perhaps you could click on the subscribe button or uh, leave a comment uh, on what you'd like to see next. I must admit, making these videos is, is quite addictive. But anyway, if you're like me and you're still diving throughout this cold winter, well done. Keep diving. But whatever you do, keep safe. Take care.